to Contemporary Art Taos 2020, the Artist Interview Series. This program consists of short interviews between myself and the artists in this exhibition that are released twice a month on Facebook Live. I'm Nicole, the Curator of Exhibitions and Collections here at the Harvard Museum of Art, and joining me today is Jan Sessler. Hello, Jan. Hello. Hi, Nicole. How are you doing? Oh, it's good. Thank you. <laughs> so you have two very different types of work in the exhibition. Um, your huge range of practice is something that's really, really compelling about you as an artist. Can you tell us about the process involved in these two different works and also um, in some of the other works that you're creating? Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I love to explore and follow my inspiration, and that leads to working with a wide variety of mediums. And when I first moved to Taos, I focused on painting and moved into printmaking. Um, but all along, I have collected fragments of things, pages from old books, um, found objects, bits of ephemera. And I started including them in some of my paintings. But uh, when I discovered Shinkole in printmaking, um, I really fell in love with the process and focused on that for about five years, kind of set aside other things. But um, I moved into, with the found objects, wanting to create, um, make them into sculpture and create a base for them. So I started working with cement. And um, when I started working with cement, I, I realized, why don't I look into making the body of the sculpture with the cement also? So that led to this work where um, my love of ephemera and containers and all kinds of things like that, um, it's the, the container became the vessel for the sculpture. Okay, and you, you mentioned you did Shinkole, you do large sculptures, you work in mixed media painting like this. Right. It's a huge range. Yeah, I, lo I love to explore and challenge myself to try new things. Um, and when I made my first cement sculpture, it's actually six feet tall. Wow. And I created a base, and then I, I cast into uh, a form that I made from recycled materials, plastic and cardboard, things like that. Incredible. So you mentioned you work with found objects, but... Um, not just found, you work with things that are often considered trash, that are considered, you know, discarded from the world. Um, what is the pull there? Are you, are you interested in our relationship to material things or Definitely. to discarding things? Yes. I'm, to me, it's um, a comment on our contemporary uh, consumer culture. Mm -hmm. And Aside from the fact that uh, often I look down at the ground and I see an object that holds interest to me, um, it's faded, it's got some patina from being in the elements, and the, the, the object has ceased to be what it was. It's something else. And to me, it's a collaboration with nature. So what man is making, our mark making in the world, is ephemeral. And it, um, nature comes and softens everything and transforms it. And so I like to show these elements in a new light. Are you also interested in aging and time? I am. Mm -hmm. Transformation through time. And, um, you know, I've, I've been drawn to collecting old books, discarded books. Mm -hmm. And when I incorporate them into my collage and I, I read the chapter of the title, I think, you know, our language has really changed. The, the way we express ourselves has changed, and it's our evolution. So all of these things are changing through time, as are we. So when I look at this work in particular, I find that my eye is really drawn to the lines that exist here. Um, you know, sort of trying, trying to follow the pattern um, to make sense. Is drawing a part of your creative practice? Do you start... It has Step been. Work. It has been as long as I remember. Actually, I grew up drawing a lot, and I have two older brothers who both drew a lot. And my father um, was a patent attorney for NCR, the National Cash Register 
corporation, but he would bring home all this paper from work that was discarded and put it in this beautiful old wooden container. And we would all draw on that. So I started realizing this is maybe informing my interest in discarded containers and paper, <laughs> working with this from an early age. So I drew a lot. And um, uh, when I studied in France, I did a studio art class and I focused a lot on drawing primarily. And then um, when I lived in Los Angeles, I actually um, had work for a while, like a I don't know, long while actually. I worked in film and when I wasn't working in film, I started illustrating for a magazine. So I did these kind of whimsical, funny uh, illustrations. Oh, that's um, great, that's a great background. <laughs> so yeah, drawing has been a part. And, and when I moved here uh, and enrolled at UNM, I studied life painting and life drawing with Michelle Cook. Mm. And I fell in love with the gesture and blind contour of life drawing. And I started to really fall in love with an intuitive line. And I, I think they kind of activate um, mystery mm -hmm. in the piece. Absolutely. I, I certainly feel that. Another word I hear a lot when people experience your work is meditative. There's a, a sereneness in it, especially this exhibition. It was 24 artists were doing a lot of different things. And this place always seems to be the quiet space where people mm -hmm. go. It's nice. Yeah, is that your okay. intention when you when you create these environments? I love that it happens. Um, I love the mystery of it. It's it's not something I set out to do. It's just um, an essence that comes through when I create. And yeah, I think it runs through most of my work. But it's I find you to be a very serene person, <laughs> so I think maybe that manifests in your work. <laughs> um, so you're a frequent world traveler, actually. When we did our studio visit over Zoom because of COVID, you were in Mexico. That's um, right. <laughs> so how does that inform your work? Are you taking inspiration from those travels? Oh, for sure. Um, when I was 18, I was an exchange student to Guatemala. So that kind of started it all. I love of other cultures and language. And then I studied, spent my junior year in Europe. Um, my sweetheart of 20 years is Austrian. So I have a whole extended Austrian family. Yeah. Wow. When I spend time there, I'm, I definitely have met a lot of contemporary artists um, from Europe and seen, gone to art fairs and seen amazing mm -hmm. museum exhibitions. And in addition to that, both in Mexico, where I have a great community of friends and other artists, um, there, there's the layers in the architecture, the peeling walls mm -hmm. and old posters and graffiti and all of these things are very different from what I've seen here I mean New Mexico has a little more of that um, but um, anyway the, the layers of the history in Europe uh, have really inspired me also I definitely see that um, so this exhibition was limited to artists from Taos or people who had deep roots in Taos. What is your relationship with this place? So like many other people who happen upon Taos, I didn't know anything about Taos. And I think it was 1992. I was driving cross country um, from Los Angeles to the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts and stopped in Taos overnight. And um, so I spent a year in the Berkshires and the plan was to come back here for two months before going back to Los Angeles. And so that was 27 years mm -hmm. ago. And I feel like I hear that story a lot. Yeah, it just, everything seemed to fall into place and I fell in love with Taos. And um, yeah, for all the reasons people say, the light, the landscape, the the multicultural aspect, mm -hmm. um, it, it just felt like home. So the last question I'll ask you, what's a project that you're working on right now that you're excited about or that you'd like to share? Well, I've been stretching more large canvases mm -hmm. and loving painting again. And I'm also continuing with more sculpture in cement. And I have two larger sculpture pieces and some small ones that I'm working on. I'm very Great. happy. I can't wait to see those. 
Thank you so much, Dan, thank for you. being with us. And thank, thank you, you so all much. for joining us on Facebook Live. Keep watching uh, up for our next interview on December 2nd. Nikesha Breeze will be here. Thank you so much.